from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Micah Show. Duh. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Lyka Show brought to you apart by The Girl Next Door. It's in theaters tomorrow. Girl Next Door also providing $500 in cash this hour to a random caller. Makes it on the air. Could be anybody. You never know. It's $500 in cash from The Girl Next Door, the ultimate guy fantasy. Starring Alicia Cuthbert from 24. It's in theaters Tomorrow is Thursday, and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. So how long do I wait to call? A day. Tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow, then a day. Yeah. So two days. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Definitely. Two days, two days is like industry standard. Well, how long are you guys going to wait to call your babies? Six days. How many times did you call her this week? Twice. Twice? You called her twice? Dan, never call abroad more than once a week. Never, ever, ever. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. More importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This being an electronic classroom. It's a correspondence course of sorts, and uh, many of you write to us. The address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. And I read every single letter you send, everything. I don't write back to just about anybody. So don't start hounding me for a response. You couldn't possibly respond to all the people who write in. But I do read everything. I spend a good part of my day reading emails. You just write to me at Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. And we get letters like this one from Jerry. I wanted to make sure we talked about on 101 this week. Please help me, says Jerry. I listen to your show all the time, and I know you're supposed to teach guys how to get laid more. But all I hear is people calling up, bitching about relationships and all the problems they have from not following your rules. I am 26, and I live in Kirkland, Washington. And I am not getting laid, but three times a year. I am good looking. I make about 75K a year. I drive a nice car, and I own a few businesses. Tell me if I'm wrong. But it seems that in Seattle, success means nothing to women, as most of my friends who are losers have girls. Well, that doesn't tell you that success means nothing. That tells you that um, the women are not that discriminating. Women want to get the richest guy they can attract. The most successful guy their looks can attract. That's what they want. So if you have a loser friend and he has a girlfriend, chances are if you showed the cash without spending it, you can hijack those broads. Somebody will. He says, what can I do to meet more women and get more ass? My biggest shortcoming is that I am short, about five foot four. And I know most women want a tall guy, but I figure my looks and success and overall personality would overcome that. Well, that's going to limit your, limit your odds only because most women want to be with a guy who's taller than they are. And uh, while there are many women who are under five foot four, many are not. And in Seattle, with all of the Swedes and Danes and all the people from that part of the world, all those tall blondes with the beer guts, um, you, know, they, they, you know, 
Height is uh, one of the genetic issues there. That there's a lot of tall, blonde girls. We know we've been. But then uh, something really telling, and this is where you find the solution to Jerry's problem. He says, I'll go all year without anything, and then girls come in packs. And I ride the wave, I ride the wave until it ends, and then comes another long drought. So, Professor, can you help this starving student understand what I'm doing wrong? Am I right about Seattle women that success means nothing? How can I get a bigger piece of the ass pie that I deserve? Thanks so much, your faithful student, Jerry. Well, Jerry, um, the fact that you do have girls in waves or packs tells me that there are women in Seattle who don't care that you're short who might be impressed by the fact that you make more than the average guy. There are women like that, and you find them. The problem is, I think, that um, when uh, the wave ends, that you let women know you're desperate. Women know when you're busy. The reason you get women in packs is because when you've got one, three more want you. When you've got none, nobody wants you. That's the way it works. So the trick is to keep up the illusion that you are always, always busy, always dating, always sleeping around. These are many of the uh, tips we give guys all the time. Don't answer the phone Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Don't pick it up. Answer only if it's one of your buddies. Do not answer the phone for a chick. Any chick who calls you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was dumped. Somebody flaked, and you are the fill-in. Never let yourself get into that position, ever. Also, never go out with a chick where you don't know that you're going to get laid on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you do have a date, don't waste it on someone you haven't slept with. Uh, that's what Mondays and Tuesdays were made for. Going out with women where you don't know if you're going to get any yet. Monday, Wild Ginger. Tuesday, El Gaucho. Wednesday, Belltown Billiards. That's where you go. Okay. Maybe a little Daniel's Broiler in there. That's where you go. But um, don't take chicks out on the weekend. And don't ever let chicks know you're alone. I know the reason you get them in waves and then you don't have them is because you start telling them that you're alone. And, and you probably tell the truth all the time. That's why you get more chicks when you have chicks. So I think it's an issue of uh, not letting people know when you're not busy. You have to make it look like you've got places to go and people to see all the goddamn time. Now, here in Southern California, whether you're dating or not, everybody has mastered that. Everybody. It's not just dating. It's also, you know, you, when you have like a Super Bowl party or a Thanksgiving dinner. These are things I do every year at my home. Um, people uh, love to have you believe that they've got more important things to spend time with you. Even your friends. You know, here in Southern California, we grow up with the idea that... Uh, you know, when you offer me an invitation to your 4th of July backyard barbecue, that's the minimum bid. Like we're uh, like we're at the Christie's on auction, you know. Okay, the starting bid is a backyard barbecue at my friend's house in Torrance. All right, now do I hear Malibu? Do I hear Hermosa? You start like an auction to see if you can get... And by the way... You never tell them you're not going to show up in Torrance until the phone doesn't ring and you know that that's the one and only invitation you got. And suddenly there you are on 190th Street tooling down to your friend's house who thought all along that you were coming, but in reality you were going to the best possible invitation you were going to get. See, we've mastered this in Southern California, but uh, everywhere else in the world you really have to incorporate that into your dating life. You need to be double shifting and triple shifting. You need to make multiple dates for an evening. And then just skip from one to the next. Don't be saying, oh, I've got a date Tuesday. I can't do anything. Yes, you can. You've got a 7.30 and a 9.30. A 7.30 and a 10. Even if you end up having sex with two women in like, good. Just take a shower in between, that's all. It's that simple. 
But uh, do women in uh, Seattle care about success? Sure they do. It's just that chunky chicks who wear um, backpacks and fanny backs and Eddie Bauer down vests to cover up the extra 30 pounds, the rolls of fat, they don't get a lot of rich guys coming after them. They don't. And where I live, 75 grand, that's a nice salary, but it ain't rich. Anyway, there we go. Uh, another listener who does not want his name used on the air says, Tom, I share many of your libertarian views. Per the Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, would effing an L.A. 9, who had a photo of George W. Bush on her bedside table, be in compliance with the 101 curriculum? He thanks me for not using his name on the air. And um, here's what I have to say to him. I saw, of course, that episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I know what you're talking about. And you know what? I don't care what politics a chick subscribes to. In fact, I'm always amazed if a chick knows who the president is, much less has a president a picture of him on her nightstand. I don't really care what anybody's politics are. If you're taking your clothes off, I'm diving in. That's it. I don't plan to be with you long enough to have a, a political discussion with you. You understand? And by the way, may I say, that some of the kinkiest chicks out there are conservatives. The people who've had it bottled up their entire lives. The people who have to go around saying they're against abortion and they're in favor of abstinence just so they can follow the bouncing ball. And the minute you get these chicks behind closed doors, a couple of Tom Colleges, bam! You're off to the races. I mean, I have uh, I have been with some of the hottest Republicans you can possibly imagine. They're completely screwed up in the head. Completely. Because they're, they're completely in deny. If they get knocked up, you think they're not going to have an abortion? They're the first ones to go. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, Tony in OC finally writes in and says, <laughs> Dear Dad, if you are my father... Is it a conflict of interest that you are also my classroom teacher? Tony, I... You're right. It is. I may have to step down from one of those positions. For God's sake. So it's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. More importantly, we teach women how men think. If you are looking to avoid a serious commitment... Avoid a relationship, avoid engagement, avoid living together, avoid getting married, avoid all the hot air, all of the time wasted and money spent on chicks and blah, 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 blah. And never put on to avoid all that. I'm a... What are we going to call? Tom. Yes, I'm Tom. So, Righteous 101 is a page right out of what brothers been doing in the hood for years, man. Mm -hmm. We hear that all the time. It's called Running Game. <laughs> and you've got, you don't. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. <laughs> The Tom Like a Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. All right. Here we are. Like us 101. I am your professor, Clint, on the Tom Like a Show. Hey, Professor. How are you doing tonight, man? Doing okay. Hey, I'm, I am really stuck between a rock and a hard place, and I think this is the, the only way where I can get a good answer. Yeah. Um,. I'm I'm 26. My fiance is 24. I've been seeing her now for about two years, and uh, she just moved in with me not too long ago. Well, she was away on business, and her fiance or her ex roommate comes over, and shows me a videotape. Well, come to find out that she was involved with amateur porn and neglected to tell me about it for two years. And when you say amateur porn, does that mean that nobody paid for it? She was just doing it for fun. She was doing it for fun, and it's available at uh, a couple of Portland's finest adult video stores. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if I should dump that bitch or what I should do right now. I, I mean, I love her, but, hell, I, I don't look at her the same now, that's for sure. Well, that's really uh, what it's all about. I mean, it, it depends on how you are with that. I mean, some people are fine with that. Uh, me, I'm not comfortable with it. I, I'd certainly date people like that, but I wouldn't marry them. Right. I mean, I, I knew she wasn't a virgin. 
Right, and I'm I'm no prude. I expect women I've uh, been with to uh, to have had guys in the past. That's the way it is. Right. So I just I just don't know. I mean, so you don't you don't think it's a good idea? Because I mean, I'm having a hard time getting over this. Well, it's a, that's the thing. If you can get over it, then get over it. If you can't, uh, there's nothing to apologize for. Do you think there should be some kind of gestation period as to how long I should give myself to try to get over this? Well, do you have a date to get married? Yes, we do. We've got just about everything taken care of as far as the site and caterers. And well, what's the date? Uh, December, December 11th. So it's not too late to cancel? No, sir, it's not. All right. Well, I wouldn't wait any longer than it would take to figure out whether you have to to pay to cancel. All right. I mean, that's your well, deadline. Well, I, I sure appreciate your advice, Tom. And could you take me out with a screaming orgasm and a fart? Watch me. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Chris on Lycus 101. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you, sir? All right, Chris. Uh, i got a question for you. Yes. Um, I've been having some problems lately with uh, ladies I've been dating where every time we go out, they want to come back to my place. Well, uh, for obvious reasons, I don't want to bring them back to my place. And right. I'm, you know, I'm curious, how do I avoid that confrontation, the issue of, you know, where do we go? Are these chicks who um, uh, live near you, or they, they live in other, other parts of town, or what? Live in other parts of town. Okay. And uh, these are like uh, attempted one-night stands? Exactly. Okay. Um, one very effective way is to say that you have a roommate who doesn't approve. You have a gentleman's agreement. You're not bringing anybody over. Since okay. these chicks are not coming to your high school reunion with you or Thanksgiving dinner and they don't know your family, how will they ever know? Yeah, do you think that uh, maybe jeopardizes, because I try to come off like I'm uh, extremely successful. Um, you oh, know, with the whole well, race. your house is under construction. See, I, I, I have a situation where my house has been under construction, and I have had an apartment. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, while I was living in the apartment, I have realized that um, this would be a great excuse for a 101 student. Like, you're in your apartment. And that, that you're only there till the house is completed. Good idea. Okay. See, I actually did that. Okay, but why not say you did that even if you didn't? <laughs> exactly. Okay. It's well, it's sense. it's very simple. Uh, you you know, since you you do you live in Santa Monica? I do. Right. You have a house up in Malibu, but you moved in with a roommate. And uh, the only uh, stipulation was that uh, you can't uh, bring over any chicks. He won't. You won't. Outstanding. All right, Tom. We'll and by the time they find out you're lying, you already got what you wanted. <laughs> then you just move on to the next victim. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All, right. All right, Tom. Thank you. Can you blow me up? Here you go, Chris. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I am your professor. It is another edition of Lycus 101. If you'd like to know how to avoid a serious relationship, how to avoid getting married... How to avoid spending money or wasting time on chicks who never put out? You call me here toll free at 1 800 5800. Tom. The Tom Likey Show. This is the Tom Likey Show. From Los Angeles. 1 800 5800. Tom. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by The Girl Next Door in theaters tomorrow. The Girl Next Door providing $500 in cash. To a random caller that makes it on the air this hour, that's $500 in cash from The Girl Next Door. The ultimate guy fantasy starring Alicia Cuthbert from 24. It's in theaters tomorrow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Tomorrow, the first Flash Friday of 2004, uh, get ready, get your signs ready, get ready to write my name or Flash Friday in dirt on the side of your truck, on your dirty uh, back window of your car, <laughs> put up some signs, bumper stickers, whatever you have to do to get flashed. Tomorrow's the day, headlights on tomorrow as we kick off the seventh summer of Friday tomorrow. Be there, be square. And don't forget that one week from tomorrow, we'll be in beautiful Portland, Oregon, for the first time since 1999, by all accounts. We'll be uh, doing our show from Barracuda at 9 Northwest 2nd Avenue in downtown Portland. 
Uh, there are tickets galore, but you have to keep listening to Max 910 Talk Radio for Guys to find out how to get them. You can also visit them at max910.com. That's next Friday, April 16th. We return to Portland. Very exciting. I love it. I do. All right. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Lycus 101. I am your professor, Andrea, on the Tom Lycus Show. Hi, Tom. I'm a first-time caller, and yeah. I can't believe I actually got through to you. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I have been with my boyfriend for almost four years now, and we talk a lot about marriage, and we want to get married, and so we're working on bills and trying to pay those off. But in the process through all of this, he's been really, like, insecure. He's been um, always feeling – he always makes me feel like I always need to reassure him about our relationship, that we're going to last forever and things are going to go fine and, you know, not to worry anything. And he just seems like he's always worrying about something. And I think that he pretty much told me that he feels like the lack, when he feels lack of, um, of I guess, the love of, of his two parents when growing up, he didn't have that. So he feels that he needs that from me. And so I don't know if that, sometimes I get kind of tired of doing that, always reassuring him and, and I love him and everything, but sometimes it's like it's too much for me. Right. Like I don't. Are know you engaged? Really... Are you engaged to him? No, I'm not engaged yet. But he has asked you to marry him. Oh yeah, we talk about it all the time, and we're we're paying off bills right now so that way we, we can you know move out and get a place and get married. That's just our total. That's Wait, our do you? Right so now. you live together now? No, we don't. We're not. I can't because you know my my religion and stuff. Your religion. Well, I pretty much follow, you know, respect my parents. Are you and are you a virgin? Think, no, I'm not. Well, that has nothing to do with religion, dear. Well, I just I don't want to disappoint my parents. Like I just don't want to do it the right way. Well, that's different to, from well, you know. but that's a different answer. If you told me you were a virgin, I'd understand. But that's not what's going on here. Well, I would. I hear a lot of times that when people end up moving out together, it ends up, you know. Like, when I'm getting married, it just it doesn't end up working out. I don't know. Well, dear, let me tell you something. You're doing yourself a favor. If you're planning on marrying somebody, to live with them for a while and see if you can stand to be around them 24 hours a day. Right. And you don't know if you can do that. Right. Do you? Um, I know. I, I no, you don't. I have any doubts. You haven't been with them 24 hours. I'm, well, you're right. I'm not having to deal with them 24 hours. Well, that, then have... you don't know. And to take it from me, dear. I have had relationships go right down the tubes the minute she moves her stuff in. Right. Uh, so you think I should move in with him first and see how they If you're out? considering marrying him. Now, right. if you're considering dropping out of the relationship, obviously don't make a bad thing worse. Oh, no. I haven't considered that at all. all right, well, if you... I kind of consider in, in working at this and getting through this together. How long have you been dating this guy? Four years. Four years? Yeah. And he's still insecure? Well, I don't think he's... I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, really. I don't think he's really come well, out and just said that. If you have a hard time living with that, what makes you think it's going to get any better? I mean, my God, you're all worried about your parents and their religious beliefs, and you're not dating any, any other guys, are you? No. And you're not... You don't have a lot of male friends, do you? I did before. You did before? Yeah. And you got rid of them because of him? Right. Because he wanted you to or because you wanted to? Because I wanted to. You wanted to. Okay. Right. So you knew what your male friends were. problems or anything. You knew right. what your male friends were there for. Right, of course. So you got rid of them. Right. And so he doesn't have to worry about that. So. Oh, no. He doesn't have to worry about anything. Right. About anything. I think the reason he's like that is because how we first started our relationship. We, you know, there was a lot of insecurity because, I mean, I wasn't serious and he was going through a divorce and I figured he was still married, so why should I commit myself to him? And. So there was a lot of mistrust. And so you were dating him before he got divorced? Yes. <laughs> now I know religion's not involved. <laughs> well, no, I guess. I don't know. I didn't make a wrong decision, but things worked out in the long run. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm an atheist, so who am I to talk? But if you're a religious person, it was wrong whether it worked out or not. Right. He was already in the process of a divorce. Not a matter. What religion are we talking about here? I'm a Christian. So you know. I, mean, I don't practice it 
to the fullest. But well, you just use it as an excuse not to do something, right? I don't know. I, but I you, don't but know. you, you fornicate with your boyfriend, and you have no problem with that. Right. You, that's in the Bible. You're not supposed to do that. I know. But you do it anyway. Right. Don't use religion as an excuse. Here. I know. Religion is not when you do or don't do things. Do whatever you want to do, don't you? Right, I do. Okay. So, anyway, now we got that issue out of the way. My my opinion is that if you look, if you get tired of having to reassure him all the time, then maybe it won't work out. And if if you don't mind doing it, I mean, you've been with him so many years, and you still have to reassure him. You're not dating yeah, other guys? Is, you're not is, flinging your male friends in his face or right. going away for the I mean, weekend with guys? Started. This just started, I can say, probably, oh, about a couple months ago. Probably about the time you talked about getting married. That's probably about the time it started. Mm, probably within the last year, we've talked. We've really sat down and started working on paying off our bills to, you know, get this going. What, and, and what are you going to accomplish by paying off your bills? Are you going to start with a clean slate? What are you talking about here? Yeah, well, we've got some debt, and we don't want to get married and get more in debt, so we just want to pay off so that we don't have any, you know, we, we're not in debt even more. Right. So so we, you know, that's what we're doing right now. But right. he's just, I don't know, for the past two months, he's just been like, oh, babe, you know, do you love me? I love you too. You know, um, I just want you to know that I'm always thinking about you and that, you know, are we going to last forever? You know, and I always say, oh, yeah, babe, of course, you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it's just too much. It's too much. Well, like I always have to say, oh, yeah, babe. You know, yeah, it'll be too sorry. much when you break up with him. So it's not too much right now. Because you're still with him. Of course. So it's not too much yeah. at this point, is it? Well, no, because I love him, and I want to work this out. It's something that I want I have loved to lots of people who uh, that I'm incompatible with, or we have major differences. But it's... Did I lose you there? Oh, there you go. Now the cell phone, baby. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Likas 101. I am your professor, Reese, on the Tom Likas Show. Dad, how's it going? Okay, son, how are you? Uh, I've missed you. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. And usually I listen, Dad, but I just got to tell you, I've been dating this chick, and I kind of like her. A couple of chicks, actually. I live by the Lycus rule. Yes. And I like to rotate three chicks at all times. That's always a good idea. And I like this girl, but I'm having a little problem right now because it's like, you know, I don't understand these chicks jumping the jump into bed with you and everything. And, you know, you see them for a couple of weeks and stuff, and then all of a sudden they want to ask me about my sex life. I don't really feel, am I obligated to discuss my sex life with these girls? Nope. By the same token, there are benefits to telling them that you sleep with other women, that you date. That the... Okay, and I'm going there, this girl now, I've seen her, she's cool, everything's great, I like my life the way it is, and now she hit me with, you know, we need to talk. Oh, I hate that. Now, what guy doesn't hate that phrase? You know what that means, right? Never be intimidated by that, though. She wants to talk, you talk. Here's what you tell her. I'm I'm sure you are a, a, a dating adult like I am. You date people, I date people. You don't see me every night. I'm sure you've got other guys you see, and if you don't, maybe you should, because I date other people, too. Yes. Just like I that. Do. And if they don't like it, uh, they should be out of the rotation. Move on. Okay, because I see her once a week. She really just made the A-list. Well, how I mean? about you start seeing her once every other week or once every three weeks? Okay. You, 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 you're putting her on ice, I think, is a great idea. Just uh, ice her. I just don't feel... I'm not the kind of guy that's going to discuss my sex life with anybody, and I'm not going to... Well, you don't have to give specifics, but well, I, I see benefits to telling women you're dating other people. Okay. Nothing has made women want me more. I, I was dating a woman once, and I don't want to get too specific about who she is because I played her like a fiddle. Okay. But there was a chick who really, really was gunning for me. She wanted to move in with me. She wanted me back. Oh, yeah. And so I used to tell her, uh, she'd say, uh, what are you doing tonight? I have a date. Okay. And I would uh, I'd tell her, uh, so uh, I'll tell you what, I'll call you tomorrow. Did it drive her nuts? Of course, but not in the way you think. It drove her nuts that she wanted me even more. Uh, like okay. She'd call me the next day. And cool. then I'd say, oh, God, you know, last night we went out, we had a steak. It was spectacular. And, uh, 
you know, she lives out in the valley, so, you know, I had to get to work today. It was quite a drive, but... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, and, and the chick used to actually tolerate it. Wow. You'd be oh, amazed. Yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to tell chicks that. And if they get pissed off, hey, you don't have an engagement ring. You, uh, you don't have any commitments here. Oh, Why? I, I, you, you, you know when you get yourself in trouble? When you try to pretend there's a commitment when one doesn't exist. Okay. Because then they try to paste you. Yeah, see, I don't want to go there either. You know what I mean? Well, then, then don't do it. Now, let me ask you this, Tom, real quick, okay? She she would be, I would say she would be like a, she'd be like an L.A. 8. Right. But, she, but she's 38 years old, so that's got to move her down, right? Well, ultimately, uh, certainly if you have long-term uh, uh, interest, uh, the 38 is going to be 40 real soon. I got no long-term interest. Well, uh, just I'm just wondering what the classifier. I'd say when she was in her 20s, she had to be an 8, 9. But right. now she's well, years. then you, you have to remember the basics here. Don't compliment her on her appearance. Okay. Don't tell her she looks good. Okay. Uh, some backhanded compliments are always good, like that she looks good for her age. There you go. That, that's, a, that's one of the great ones. You, okay. you, you know what? You look so good for, for your age. I can't believe What are you, 40? Yeah. Oh, 38. <laughs> you look great. They can't nail you on that. They, you know, you, you're trying to compliment them. And in reality, you're trying to knock the bricks out from under them. There you go. And then there they go, go home, and then that's when they start uh, working with the uh, Retin-A and the Botox and the alpha hydroxy acids and all that stuff. There you go. You start calling the plastic surgeon. Uh, By the way, no I'm, matter how old the other girls are, let the, let her believe the others are, you know, 25, 23, 20. I got a couple of those. Great. But, you can't Let her know that. Them. They're just banging material. Let her know that. Let her know that. Tell her her. Tell her. You know what? The the I like breasts like yours. You know they they have they have class. After all these years, they still stand up pretty good. I'll tell you. <laughs> they don't there sag you know. all that much. I'm amazed at how good they look. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, yeah I'm telling you, the backhanded compliment is the best. It'll keep it's her the, right there. It's the perfect crime. Because women that age are desperate for any reassurance or compliments. And you have to make sure that you appear to be giving it while what you're really doing is savaging her appearance. I'll give it a shot. And uh, believe hey, me, you'll, you'll keep her in line. Been single seven years. I got married one time. It was a big mistake. I'm telling you, you're telling the guys the right thing. Wear a condom. And don't get in there and support all these people and kids and everything else, but definitely wear a condom. I never have sex without a condom on. Bang, bang, boom, Reese. Thank you for the call. Tom, Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. If there was no women in this world, what would you do? Y'all be running around circles uh, going, we'd... duh, duh. No, we wouldn't. Yeah, you would. No, we'd be uh, slapping the salami. The Tom Likis Show. Tom Like It Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Like It 101, I am your professor. Let's say hello here to Juan on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Juan. I, I just to let you know, tell you what I'm going to do. See, I have my chick, and I've been with her for two years. She stopped putting out because she's afraid I'm going to knock her up. All right. So it's good to me. I've been giving her hands, you know. But uh, I want some, you know, at least once a week. I don't mind, so. But she don't get it, so that's it. I got girls lined up, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get it somewhere else. What do you think? Did you tell her that? Oh, I told her that. We talked about it. You told her you're going to get it somewhere else? Oh, I didn't tell her that. Why not? Uh, yes, I do stuff on my on, on the down low. And that's what I like to do. Well, what what is the point of having a girlfriend who doesn't put out? What's the point of that? Oh, well, at first it was good, you know. But but, but she doesn't put out anymore, so it's not I good anymore. anymore. I know it's not you good. You tell anymore. her that someone else is going to do the heavy lifting. Oh yeah, it's most definitely yeah. But tell her. You know, don't don't keep that on the down low. You tell her that. You know, it's like I'm gonna get out of hand once again. By the way, she had sex with other guys before you. Oh, yeah. She, she did. didn't cut them off, did she? I don't think so. Yeah, but she cut you off. I know. And you let her get away with it. Yeah. You let her not. get away with it. If you're not getting it elsewhere, you're letting her get away with it. Uh, not for long. Well, but the point is, it doesn't do any good to secretly go out with other chicks. 
Uh, you're right. You're I not married. You. you tell her. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I've been listening to you for a long time, and uh, everything you say is just right. Yeah, well, you tell no, her... Sir. You tell her that uh, you're you're a growing boy and uh, you need to get it somewhere, and you're going to get it. You know what? Girls just don't understand. They need to take care of their man. They don't do that. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to go somewhere else. That's right. Juan, I'm going to give you the 500 bucks. Since nobody else asked for it from the girl next door, it opens tomorrow. The Tom Likas Show.